Thank you for joining me again for this time of reflection. It's a, a joy and a privilege for me, for me to be able to lead us. If you joined us last week, you will recall that I spoke about peace, God's peace, God's gift of shalom, meaning peace, well-being and a sense of wholeness. And this week I want to speak about another of God's great gifts to us, the gift of hope. I'm still troubled by what I have been seeing and reading about in Afghanistan. Last week I shared what I saw in an interview with a woman who fled Afghanistan when she said the people of Afghanistan have no freedom, no safety, no life, no hope. What a tremendous sense of sadness and great despair. I've since seen the results of some local journalists being beaten by the Taliban in Kabul. I've seen footage in Kabul of people who can't work, can't access their money from the bank, can't buy food for their family, are living in fear and are increasingly desperate. I can't help but wonder... Do we have some responsibility toward the people of Afghanistan as we've had serving soldiers and civilians working on the ground in Afghanistan? Then last week I saw the joy of an Afghani family preparing to leave 14 days of hotel quarantine in Adelaide to start a new life in Australia. And they were safe, healthy, excited to beginning a new life and full of hope for the future. They said for two weeks in the hotel, we have not heard any gunfire or explosions. This world is so different to what we are used to, and we are so grateful to Australia. They seemed ready to grasp this opportunity with both hands. When it comes to the COVID pandemic, we're being told that vaccinations are our hope, and our pathway out. We cling to any signs of hope at the moment as infection rates rise in New South Wales and Victoria, and many are in hospital, including in intensive care units. Let me share a few verses of scripture that speak of God's hope. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope, comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and work and word. It was an interesting way it's expressed. Good hope. And then Romans 15 verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May God fill you, God's gift of hope. In our common language, we use the word hope to speak of what we wish will happen. The word speaks of our desire. We want something to happen, but it may not happen. We absolutely want lots of people getting vaccinated to be the game changer for us, but there are no guarantees. We hope that vaccinations change the situation that we're in. In the scriptures and in Christian theology, the word hope has a much stronger sense, a certainty, because we put our trust in the promises and the faithfulness of God. We don't just wish that God loves us. We know We know that God loves us. Our hope, our certainty is based on who God is as Lord of all and the one who can be trusted. God has been faithful to past generations and will be faithful to this current generation and to all those who will come after us. If our future is not satisfied by God, then we are more likely to be excessively anxious We end up thinking about ourselves, our future, our problems. And that keeps us, keeps us from actively loving. In other words, hope is the birthplace of Christian self-sacrificing love. 
That's because we just let God take care of us and aren't preoccupied with having to completely focus on ourselves. Yes, we play our part, but we can rely on God as well. And we do rely on God. We put our trust in God. We say, Lord, I just want to be there for other people tomorrow because you're going to be there for me. It's a fantastic place to be when we can just put our trust in God and trust in God's presence with us. Let God be at work within us and around us. May we be able to have faith in God through Jesus Christ that fills us with hope, with love, with mercy toward others, with confidence in the future because God is absolutely a part of that future. We long to be free to step forward each day, confidently because we know we are not alone. We know that God is with us. Our family and friends are there for us. Our Christian brothers and sisters are encouraging us, praying for us, and indeed standing with us. Thanks be to God for the great gift of hope, the gift of his love and grace, the gift of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and for the transforming and enabling gift of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God indeed. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you are trustworthy. We thank you and acknowledge your great faithfulness to your people, your faithfulness to people throughout the generations. We thank you for your rich gifts to us, the gift of love. But today in particular, we give thanks for the gift of hope, the hope we have in you. We give thanks for Jesus Christ and your spirit that is with us each day. Strengthen us in these challenging times. Help us to trust you more. Help us to share your hope, your love, your care with others. And thank you that you love and accept each one of us. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me for this time of reflection and I look forward to being back next week as we share once more. May God bless you. Amen.